for number 13 and 14, it says here, consider the experiment of tossing a four-sided die followed by flipping a coin that heads, heads, or tails. Uh, what they want us to do here is write the sample space for the event. Uh, make this note. The die itself has four options. The coin has two. Therefore, I want the die and the coin. There's eight in the set. Uh, the die could have a one, two, three, or four, and it could have heads. Or it could have one, two, three, and four, or tails. Part four, number 14 says, list the outcomes of the event odd number and heads. It's as simple as it looks. 1H and 3H is that combination. Okay, number 15, consider the following data. Number of people aged 5 and over speaking various languages at home in selected U.S. cities in 2006. So we have Chicago, Denver, L.A., and New York. We have English-only Spanish people in other languages. Uh, they want to know in 15, what percent of the people living in Chicago and New York combined? So those in Chicago and in New York combined spoke languages other than English at home. Languages other than English would be Spanish and other languages in this. Uh, so what we want to do is total up what is in the green circles, and that's going to be a total of 10,177 people. Of those six spots, there's four of them that count as the 4,583, and this is going to be about 45% of the people. So in Chicago and New York, about 45% of that population speaks the language other than English at home. Number 16, a baseball player has a batting average of .240, which means that he has a 24% chance of getting a hit in each at-bat. What is the probability that the player gets a hit in each of three consecutive at-bats? So he's at-bat once, twice, and a third time. So again, listen to what I said, at-bat once, and twice, and a third time. So it's multiplication, not adding. The probability of him getting a hit is 0 0.240 of this one, 0 0.240, and so forth. So what we have is 0 0.240 cubed, which is going to be approximately 0 0.0138. This is about a 1.38% chance that this particular batter with this batting average will make three consecutive hits in a row. Okay, 17 and 18 use this data. A particular location has a 16% chance of snow on any January day, regardless of whether or not it snowed the previous day. 17, what is the probability of two consecutive days with snow? So day one and day two. Um, the probability that it snows is 0.16 of that day, and the next day, 0.16. Um, so if you do 0.16 squared, you are going to get approximately 0 0.0256, which is about a 2.56% chance that it is going to snow in this town two days in a row. Okay, switching gears on 18. What is the probability two consecutive days without snow? Okay, day one and day two. Without snow is its complement. So it either snows or doesn't snow. So without snow would be an 84% chance. Without snow, an 84% chance. This is going to give us approximately 0 0.7056. So we have about a 70.56% chance we have two consecutive days without any snow. Okay, um, let's move on to number uh, 19 and 20. Okay, number 19, Caden is hanging seven pictures on a wall in a single row. How many different ways can Caden hang the pictures? He has a picture one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He looks behind him and he has seven pictures. He has seven choices. He hangs one up. There's only six left. Five, four, three, two, one. This is seven factorial. And 7 factorial is going to be 5,040 different ways. Okay. Number 20. How many different ways can Caden hang the pitcher if a certain pitcher must be in the middle? 
Okay, we have the seven pitchers. A certain pitcher must be in the middle. I don't know which one it is. There's going to be one way to put it, however they tell me, however they want it. That leads me with six choices here. Five, four, three, two, one. That's going to be six factorial, which is 720 different ways. Okay. The last problem on this particular page is right here. Um, there are 10 girls and 15 boys in a third grade class. The teacher chooses four students at random for the class to work on a special project. What is the probability all four students on the co committee will be girls? Probability means one fraction, so I need one fraction. Here I want all the students in the class, and here is just the girls. Now keep in mind he's only choosing four students and four girls. So he's choosing four students out of a class of 25. So it's 25, 24, 23, 22. By the way, that is 25, choose four. And when you do that, you're going to get, I believe, 303, 600. In choosing the girls, on the top, he's going to choose a girl. There's only 10 girls, so he has 10, 9, 8, 7 choices for that, which is going to be 5040. When you simplify this fraction, you're going to get the final answer. It's approximately 0 0.0166. So there's about a 1.66% chance, if he chooses four people to do the project, that he randomly chooses four girls in a row. Okay, in this last problem, we're back to our uh, various speaking languages of these four cities. They want us to find the probability that a person age five or over living in one of these cities spoke only English at home. So... If anyone in one of these cities, so all the cities are right here. So if you add up all the cities, there are 14,186. And what are the chances they spoke only English? It's just these right here. So that's going to be our 7342. This is approximately 0.518. So about 51.8% of the people in these four cities only spoke English. Now, 23 says, find the probability a person of age 5 or over living in New York. So we're just isolated by looking at these totals here. So we want all New Yorkers. If you add that up, by the way, all the New Yorkers is 7638. How many of them uh, speak Spanish or another non-English language? Spanish or another non-English is right there. If you add that up, it's 3656. It's going to be approximately 0.79. So about 47.9% of the people in New York spoke a language other than English.